Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here. In this episode of Zigmaster, we we're going to be continuing our conversation about struct layout in memory. And in this case, we're going to be talking about the extern struct. Uh, the primary reason for an extern struct is interoperability with C code. And in order to achieve that, uh, the extern struct adheres to the uh, C ABI for the target that you're compiling to. And uh, what basically what that means is that uh, it doesn't have the freedoms that the native zig struct has in order in, in, in terms of uh, rearranging fields and things like that um, to optimize the space used by the struct. So an extern struct, as we have here, we're defining once again this struct S, but this time we're using the extern keyword. And that's basically the only difference from the code that we used in the previous episode. Um, if you don't have the extern keyword, it's a native zig struct. If you add the extern keyword, it's now an extern struct and will comply with the C ABI. That means that these fields have to be in this same order in memory. Okay, A has to come first, B, then B, then C. Okay, and uh, the layout uh, function is exactly the same as in the previous episode. It's going to print some information about the type and uh, its fields. And here in main, we're going to be um, instantiating here, creating an instance of that struct in this constant s. And we pass in a pointer to that uh, constant to the layout function. And we are calling this function dump here with uh, passing in the parameter, the, the argument in this case to in the call is s. And if we go up here to the top of the file, you're going to see that we are uh, defining here, uh, this dump function here as an extern function. We have the extern keyword here once again, but this time it comes before what, what would normally be a function uh, uh, the definition in Zig with the fn keyword. But putting extern before it, uh, you're basically saying that this function is defined uh, externally. And in, in most cases, it, it's, it, we're talking about uh, interoperability with C. And we have indeed a C file here called test.c. And in this file, we are defining a struct type. Um, and uh, we're also calling it S here. And we have these uh, three fields, A, B, and C. And we're using these types, uint8t, uint32t, and uint, uh, uint8t which is basically the, the counterparts to the zig u8, u32, and u8, okay? And here we have this function called dump, which takes uh, precisely one parameter of type s, of that struct type, and we are just doing a printf uh, of, of a formatted display here of the fields, uh, the values of those fields, okay? So we have this on the c side. Let's go back to zig. And uh once we um, define that extern function dump we're calling it here with our instance of our extern struct okay so let's see what happens when we build and run this and um, let's start out at the top here uh, the output here uh, of, of the, the the information for the type itself as you can see uh, in the previous episode, when we were dealing with a native zig struct, the size was 8. But this time, the size is 12. And the reason for that is that since we can't rearrange the fields, then we're going to have more padding. And let's, let's see why. Here we have field A. And it's telling us uh, that the size indeed is 1 byte. The alignment is 1. But this time, the field A is at offset 0. Okay? And it has this address here ending in uh, 70. Um, with the native zig struct, uh, field A came after field B. Field A was at offset uh, 4. Field B here is at offset 4, so it's coming in second after A. Uh, once again, the size is 4, the alignment is 4. And as you can see, uh, the address ends in 74, so indeed it's using up uh, 4 bytes here. And that also tells us that field A is also using four bytes. So we have one byte for the actual value, and we, we're going to have three, three bytes um, of padding. Okay. 
And finally, field C, it's telling us that it's at offset 8, so it's coming after field B. And uh, here we see that the address, it's ending here in 78. So it indeed is coming 4 bytes after um, uh, field B. And since we're seeing uh, over here that uh, the, the total size is 12, then we know that uh, field uh, C is also going to be taking up 4 bytes. Even though the size is 1, it's going to have an additional 3 bytes of padding. Okay, So uh, all, all 3 fields are going to be using up 4 bytes. And uh, the alignment per se of the struct is going to be 4, which is the largest alignment of uh, the, the field with the largest alignment okay and here we see that we successfully we were able to successfully call that C function dump with our struct now let's see what happens let's move over here to the top and um, if we remove the extern keyword here let's go back here and try to run this again now the code will not compile and let's see what we have here it's telling us that the parameter of type s not allowed in function with calling convention c okay so basically uh, we, we cannot use a native zig struct with a c function let's put the keyword back here Let's clear the screen. And now, as you can see, we were able to once again call that C function uh, successfully. OK, so um, as you can see, the extern struct has uh, those restrictions. Uh, it has to adhere to the C ABI. But when you need to interoperate with C, it will make that interoperability much, much smoother between C code and Zig because you can have uh, your structs defined on the uh, zig side and take advantage of all the different things that you can do on with the, with uh, with a struct in zig but uh, on the C side you you will have no problems using that extern struct type uh, in your C code as, as we saw here so uh, that's all I wanted to pretty much cover about the extern struct type in zig so I hope you find this useful do the builder here I'll see you in the next one